Okay, it's been about a year since I bought my Lenovo Yoga 13. It's the original one, not the Yoga 2. Uh, so it has limited hard drive space. So uh, today I'm going to cover how to install a second hard drive inside, a second SSD. Uh, it's been, uh, there are the, been about a year, so there's other p people out there who show you how you can do this. I'm going to have a little bit more detail about where the little clips are and everything. So that's the purpose of this video, is to give you very detailed instructions on how to install that second SSD. Now that they're very cheap. The next thing I'm going to show you, here's the tools. Now, you're going to need this particular tool set. You're going to need a what's it called a Torque, T-O-R-Q. Uh, that's the one on the far left uh, to get the back screws off the back. Now, you can do it with other screwdrivers, but the best way to do it is go find a Torque set. I got that kit for like seven, eight bucks. I don't know. Uh, it also has other small screwdriver tips as well. Uh, some of the other tips will be used for taking out some internal screws. Uh, so let's go ahead back here and uh, we're going to talk about how to, how to find uh, some information about your system. First we're going to go in here and say msinfo32 and we're going to go ahead and run that to see uh, what kind of uh, hard drives we have. Now you see here I have uh, the Lenovo and if you go down here you'll see all the different information of what's in there and what's available and all that. But on the left hand side you'll see hardware resources and components. So if we go over here and we click on the Oh, actually, that's the wrong one. We'll go down here to components. We're going to take a look at the uh, actual physical uh, parts of it. And we're going to hear their storage. We're going to drives. This talks about the drives that are there. Now, it has two because I've already installed the second one. This is taken after I installed it. Uh, but you'll see that uh, it talks about there's the, what your normal C drive is going to be. And uh, down here is the one I'm going, if I have installed it. So you'll see that at the end. So when you go down here to disk, you'll see the exact model number of the disk, which is important. You want to get one as close as possible to that model number that's in there, and that's what I did. Uh, so I went on eBay, and I just searched for some Samsung Yoga 13 SSD. Uh, it brought up, uh, of course, just the regular stuff. So I decided, okay, let's go for Samsung drives. And sure enough, as soon as I uh, went in there and did that, I found several. And here's one here uh, for $59, a uh, certain model number. And uh, take a look around and see which one uh, you... Uh, think you want to get and everything, what size you want, but because you can do more than 128 gig, you can do whatever you want. So uh, take a look at this one here. Uh, it'll, if we go into this one here, uh, it's uh, 69 bucks. Uh, it's a solid date. It has a part number there, and it may be different, a little bit different than what uh, the part number that you have installed that we saw in the thing. But uh, what's good about uh, uh, this, you can take a look at this one here, and it gives you exactly, now he may not ship you this exact one. But uh, you can see if the, the model numbers are close to what you what you want to have. Uh, and if I scroll down here, this guy here, if you go down here, you get more description. But down here near the very bottom, uh, this guy says, give them a call. Let, email them the configuration number and serial number, and then they'll make sure that you get the right hard drive. Well, you can't beat that. So that's uh, that's pretty good. So I recommend uh, either this guy or uh, the one I use. So uh Go out there and uh, find the drive you want. Make sure before, don't necessarily buy it because we're going to go into the PC first to make sure you can get all the screws off if you're capable of doing it before you spend your money. Go out there. Now, this is the one I bought, a little more expensive. It was closer to the model number that I wanted, and that's why I used it. Came in quickly within three days, uh, perfectly installed great. So uh, th this is another one you can probably use as well. So here we are. I'm going to the back of the, the back of the PC. Turned it over. There's the torque screws, the ones all around. You have uh, around the sides each one of them. You have some between the fans here and between each set of the fans. The outlets there, and down of course, of course, down the other side as well. Now these are those torque screws you're going to need that special screwdriver for. Okay. Now we're going to take a look at the keyboard here and how to remove that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come back here to the back of the keyboard. Let me get some light on it here. You'll see there's a little line in between the keyboard and the and the actual system right there. Okay. Now instead of probably on the side over here where you might make some visible damage and everything, just be a little bit careful with a very small screwdriver. Come back here to the back. If you mess it up a little bit, it's probably going to be visible. And you get it to unclick there, and then you can use your fingernail to grab onto it and just pull on it until it comes up. Well, and it also clicks back in. But once you get it up there enough to where you can get it, just gently pull until you feel that. Now be careful. Do not pull hard. You don't want it to have, there's a cable on the back. So you want to turn, take it off, and slide it forward a little bit to un un disconnect it from the front. Rotate it gently and put it down. And you'll see there's a ribbon cable that we want to make sure that you don't mess with. 
Now, to go back here, here's those little clips that we depressed in the back. I just want you to see those that you depress down in order to release the back. So that's what you're getting at. Because if you look here on the on the back of the keyboard, whoop, let me get back here a little bit. That's the slot that they lock into. So all you're doing is just pulling on those a little bit to release those. And those in the front slide in. So that's how the keyboard comes out. Now, going back to the, uh, the connector, again, be careful that you don't yank on the keyboard. Uh, you're going to be messing with it a little bit like, several times during this. Uh, so just be careful. By the way, this is your memory slot. If you only have 4 gig while you're there, you can upgrade to 8 gig pretty cheap. Just buy a new uh, a memory module for that. And I bought a Crucial, as you can see there. But here's the screws here. This is a screw here that's already been removed. Uh, there's a screw here, okay? And there's a screw over here on the side over here. There's a couple more. There's one between, between the fans. Uh, let me move over here. There's one between the fans here and one in the background one over up there. Do not. Do not move any or remove any of the screws that are visible. They hold components of plates. All the videos will tell you to. Uh, don't do that. By the way, a very small uh, Phillips head is the best screwdriver here. Forget those because some of these are a little tight on the metal frame. So that's how to how to do the metal frame. Now to get the sides off, there's a side running along the side here of your your PC all the way around from the front and the sides. Now I started with the, uh, from the USB drives on the side all the way around the front. Eventually you get it to lift up. You don't have to do the back. It's just the front. Uh, you'll see here there's a little clips inside. You know, see those cl clips right there. And that's what you have to get to let go. Now you'll see that there's one there. And if we move down the, down here, there's another one. And there's uh, three across approximately, I think. But you have to just gently go across into the front next to those posts and until it lets go. You're not going to damage anything. Uh, and until this whole the whole top is loose. Again, there's cables inside, so we want to be careful here. So inside, there's one on the right. That's it there, okay, in the middle. And there's also one on the left, which is there. It is on the top left. Those are the two you have to worry about. So the, the one on the top right, you'll never disconnect it. You'll be fine. But that one on the top left is actually this cable that attaches up here. And that actually runs the lights on your front of your computer. And so in order to uh, get this to... Uh, come off completely, you're going to have to let that go because you can't rotate this lid out of the way. You can't pull it back. You can't uh, get it to release it to get to your hard drive uh, space. Fortunately, you can do that with a fingernail or a screwdriver, but a fingernail is fine. Just unplug it until it releases like this. It just plugs up out of the socket over here, and it gives you enough room so you can take your actual metal tray, pull it up without screwing up the other, other uh, connections, because you want to rotate this out of the way so you can get to that hard drive installation space. So if we go over here and we pull it back in, there you have it. Now you see that I've already got the hard drive installed here, but I've just pulled this back enough just to get to that uh, that section there where the hard drive's at. So I've plugged the SSD in, and I've used a screw. It has a little pin on the right, but there's a screwdriver. I used one of the screws, the back uh, screen screw, that uh, metal screen screw that we talked about. To do. So to put it all back in, after you install it, you simply slide it back there, Put this in place, snap this all down, and then push down. Get it, in, uh, make sure you're getting it right and everything, and get it all lined up, and push down on your, all your edges uh, to get it uh, to snap in. And so once it's snapped in, uh, you're ready to finish your installation. Now, of course, plug, you have to plug in your cable back in over here. That runs your lights, your power on, and your disk drive lights in the front of your computer. So you need to make sure that gets well dot well you know, put back in very carefully uh, to make sure that's in there uh, to make sure your lights still work. So just uh, push on it until you get it in place and it should be no problem getting that installed correctly. Now I've chosen to, to uh, put screws in certain places. I'm leaving this one here out. I'm, I'm that one back there. I'm making sure the fan gets it because obviously the possibility of rattling. Uh, I'm putting this one back in and the one on the far left as well. Uh, so that's the screws because I borrowed one from my hard drive. If you find a screw that's correct for your hard drive, go ahead and do that. But I'm doing the main ones. Uh, the only one that's in the back is a grounding screw, uh, which may or may not be a good idea, but so far uh, I'm okay. So now I'm double-checking to make sure everything's clicked back in and everything's back uh, in place. And all that's left really to do is to, to put the, the keyboard back in place. Again, paying attention to the cable, you take your keyboard and you make sure you don't yank on it. And you put, rotate it back in place, put the front in first, then press evenly along the sides and the back to place your keyboard. Now all you have to do is put your uh, back screws back in and you're done. Uh, as soon as it's back together, everything's fine. And we're ready to take a look at getting it actually working. 
Now you may or may not be able to see it. If I go to my PC here, and if I say this PC, and of course I say open, and I uh, go ahead and take a look. By the way, I did this prior to putting all my screws in to make sure everything's working. Now if I look over here, and I come down here to here, there's only the C drive. There is no uh, D drive. And so let's find out why. If we go down here to disk management and take a look in here, you'll see that it comes up. There's only one disk, disk zero. No uh, disk one, no other drive. So why is that? Well, it could be a different thing, but the main thing is, is that I decided I'd go into the BIOS of the system, so I'm going to boot to the BIOS to make sure I get this. Because even after I refresh this, it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't find the drive. So what I did is I rebooted the system to the BIOS. Now you can do that by F12 or F2 or the little small round button in the front of your PC. The BIOS recognized it. I saved the BIOS the settings and I came back in here and sure enough there's a second disk now in Device Manager. So, uh, so what are we going to do about that? Well we're going to go back into here again and we're going to go actually go out to the disk management section and we're going to click on that and sure enough what pops up but it automatically knows that you have initialized your disk you want to choose GPT here, go with partition table, you want to say OK, uh, and it'll go ahead and uh, start uh, initializing that disk for use. Uh, let's move this off to the side here so we can watch, and, and you'll see how the initialization process works. So you'll see the white portion down below will turn to the, the slotted line saying it's done. And the next thing you want to do is right click and say new simple volume. And the volume initializer, the mass, the uh, wizard or whatever will come up, uh, simple volume wizard. And you just click on next and you go into here uh, to create it. And you say, okay, uh, there's the size of it. I'm using the entire thing. I want to use it all. You just click on next again. It goes to the, choose what drive. It's going to be your D drive. Okay. Don't want to forget the other options and everything. And say, yep, you can put a new label in here or not. It's up to you. And you can do a quick format, uh, which is fine. Uh, it says I'm going to say doom, and then pretty soon down below, boom, you have a new volume. You are now ready to use it. It pops up, and if we take a look here, uh, we have a new volume D uh, available for use. So there you go. With a very few tools, a little preparation, some very nice care when you were dealing with the cables and everything, and you can add on an extra hard drive space you need in your Yoga, thir yoga 13. Uh, so you can add on games or whatever, or music files, or whatever you want to have there. Uh, for extra storage. So enjoy your new fuller capacity Yoga 13. Hey, for more great tips from Old Guy Geek, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, share it with your friends on Facebook or Twitter. Uh, take a look at our playlist, Windows 8 playlist, Windows Phone 8 playlist, and a general how-to. And of course, our latest uh, feature video. And thanks for watching.